Hello again, SCP fans. We've once again sparked up the Anomatron 6000, our state-of-the-art supercomputer that takes countless data streams from the SCP Foundation's various anomalies and allows us to simulate potential scenarios that could never normally occur. For example, what if Boba Fett, one of fiction's most iconic galactic bounty hunters, took out the Sarkic menace that is the flesh that hates? Well, let's press the button and find out. A long time ago, in a barely explored corner of a galaxy far, far away, the rhythmic blink of bright red emergency lights brought the hunter back to consciousness. Beneath the tinted visor of his helmet, his vision was still blurry from the blow he had taken to the head as his ship had jolted to a stop. Blinking away the haze clouding his eyesight, he focused on the light still flashing up at him from the console in front of the seat he was strapped into. Wait, was he? He lifted a gloved hand to double check, still secure, buckled in tight. Finally able to see again, the bounty hunter turned to the console, checking the readouts on the circular screens of his ship's cockpit. It didn't take running a quick diagnostic for him to realize his predicament. As durable and heavily armored as his trusty fire spray was, the vessel had taken a pretty nasty hit. He knew he was taking a risk flying through an area of space controlled by the infamous Crimson Dawn. The crime syndicate maintained a fragile alliance with the hunter's slothful, slug-like employer, but after spotting his ship trying to pass through their territory undetected, they had retaliated. Sending a squad of ships after the fire spray and outmaneuvering them hadn't been easy, especially the smaller single-person fighters that could zip around at much faster speeds than the hunter's heavy gunship. But the Syndicate had used its fighters as merely a distraction, drawing his attention away from the larger attack ship drawing in from the rear. Receiving a full blast from an ion cannon was bad enough. The energy bolt had struck the hunter's ship, serving a direct hit that slowed his vessel down to a crawl, albeit still intact for now. Ion blasts weren't designed to cause lasting damage to a ship, only to disrupt all electronic systems on board. From his cockpit, the bounty hunter knew exactly why his adversaries had done this. They wanted to capture him alive, and possibly take his fire spray too. He wasn't about to let that happen. The ship had been passed down to him by his father, along with the armor he now wore that made him instantly recognizable as one of the most feared hunters in the galaxy. But having his ship rendered without navigation systems or control over the engines meant he couldn't steer it clear of the path of an oncoming fighter. The smaller ship moved to swerve out of the way only too late. It clipped the fire spray's wing, causing the hunter to lurch forward and hit his head as his ship spun out of control, drifting away lost in space. By the time he came back around, he found himself adrift in an unfamiliar, uncharted corner of the galaxy. His ship was still badly damaged, running on a reserve of emergency power that was quickly depleting. The hunter fumbled with the controls, taking a look at the star map on his display. He didn't recognize this quadrant or even the system he was in. There was one planet looming ahead, a green and blue world with a single neighboring moon. It was then the hunter recognized what the red light had been warning him about. In its damaged state, the fire spray had been caught in the planet's gravitational pull and was now hurtling towards the surface. Holding on tight, bracing himself for impact, Boba Fett prepared for a particularly bumpy landing. The entire ship buckled as it passed through the planet's upper atmosphere, the metalwork creaking as scraps were torn away from the outer hull by extreme G-forces. Boba yanked at the steering columns, barely able to change the course of his ship's descent. The power was still minimal after the ion attack, practically running on fumes. Looking out of the large front viewport, Fett could see streaks of heat as his fire spray plummeted to the surface. He had an idea, a risky move, but it just might work. If it didn't, then his storied career as the galaxy's most infamous bounty hunter might just come to an unremarkable, anticlimactic ending. Pulling at the controls, he repositioned the ship's remaining fin-like wing, the one still mostly operational, and angled the fire spray so that its rear boosters were facing towards the planet, its internal gyro system keeping him sat upright. Still tumbling straight down, now in landing position, all Boba could do was hold tight and pray. Prayers that were answered when the console lit up with an alert. The heat of the re-entry had jump-started the engines, reigniting the gunship's propulsion system, not enough for sustained flight, but adequate to allow the hunter to control his descent and lessen the impact of the rough landing. The fire spray came to a crashing halt in the snow, still mostly intact but too badly damaged to take off. 
Clambering his way out, Boba Fett examined the wreckage of his ship. It had been in far worse scraps over the years, but every time the fire spray sustained damage, he couldn't help but think of what his father, Django, would say. Or his donor, as some would call him, given that Boba was a pure, unaltered genetic clone of his dad. Turning around, he looked out over the expanse of the frozen region he'd crashed on. The wind carried with it an icy bite. Fett was only shielded from it by the insulated flight suit he wore under his green painted plates of Beskar steel armor. He lowered the antenna on his Mandalorian helmet, using its viewfinder to survey the horizon. Instantly, his eyes spotted a sign, a worn sheet of metal, half buried in the snow. There was something off about this sign, though, that instantly told Boba he wasn't on Hoth, Ilum, Ortho, Plutonia, or any other ice planet he knew of. He trudged closer to the sign, crossing the frozen tundra alone, the cape over his shoulder whipping in the freezing cold gale. Where there was a sign, there could easily be civilization, maybe even somewhere Fett could get parts to fix his inherited ship. He forced himself not to stop and examine the sign, but couldn't help glancing at it as he passed. Boba couldn't recognize the lettering written on it at all, not the characters that had printed on the metal, nor the word painted over it in red. At first, he thought it might be Aubresh, but the closer he got, he realized it was a language he didn't understand. Continuing on past it, Boba tried to put thoughts of the sign out of his head, unaware that it read, Lake Baikal, Siberia, and that someone had painted the Russian word for run over it. It didn't take long for Boba to reach the civilization that he was looking for, or what was left of it anyway. The small fishing town reminded him a little of the city of Mos Espa back on Tatooine although it looked to have been abandoned for quite some time. The rickety buildings were all constructed out of wooden planks, with a thick coating of frost over almost every surface. As Boba marched further in, a gunslinger walking into a frozen ghost town, there was almost total silence. The cold winds had died down to barely a whisper now. The stranded bounty hunter looked around, finding no signs of anything nearby. No spaceport, no Jawas he could trade with, no townsfolk to ask for directions. No signs of life. Something moved behind him, causing Boba to instinctively whip around to face it, producing his EE-3 carbine blaster with a draw speed rivaled by a few of the fastest hands in the galaxy. His weapon was trained on nothing. Whatever had caused the sound was nowhere to be seen. Keeping his gun up and at the ready in one hand, Boba reached for a button on one of his gauntlets. Within his helmet, the pure white of the snow blinked away, replaced by a blue filter providing him with a heads-up display that highlighted any nearby heat signatures. There was a trail on the ground just a few feet from him. Not tracks, mind you. Just a single streak of warmth left carved through the snow. Cautiously, Boba followed it. The trail curved around a nearby shack, and then disappeared through a hole that had been punched through one of its walls. The wooden planks it was built from were all splintered outwards, as if something large had burst out of it. Inside, the shack had been coated in enough frost to freeze everything solid. Cups and plates at the dinner table looked like they'd been encased in carbonite. Looking around the dark, abandoned interior, Boba barely noticed something slithering down towards him from the ceiling. A windy, fleshy appendage whipped around Boba's arm, locking it tightly in place. He pulled against it with all his strength, but the bounty hunter couldn't free his hand or the blaster he was holding. Turning to see his attacker through the boards of the upper floor, Fett could make out a writhing, massive shadow attached to the long, grotesque appendage that now had him in an arm lock. In all his years of bounty hunting, he'd never seen a species like it. Whatever it was, his Beskar and flight suit were protecting it from feeling its disgusting, slimy grip against his skin. Although he wasn't too keen on being held by this monster for much longer. With his free hand, Boba tried to wrench the tentacle off of him, only to feel it snaking further and tighter around his arm. Bending it in the opposite direction his elbow was meant to bend. Boba grunted, stifling a scream under his helmet as he felt his arm on the verge of snapping. But the pain brought back reminders of his lessons, his training under his various mentors, his father, Aura, even Old Bane. Even with his blaster arm ensnared, a good bounty hunter was never unarmed. Knocking the gauntlet on his free arm against his leg to activate it, he lifted his fist upwards as a streak of flame erupted from the Mandalorian Vambrace, setting fire to the wooden floor above. And the creature, which shrieked in pain as it caught a light, relinquishing its grip. 
Thinking fast and moving at a speed to match, Boba leaped out of the way as if a huge monster came crashing through the burning wood planks. Had he not rolled to a safe distance just in time, then it would have landed on him, crushing the bounty hunter under its weight. Back on his feet, Boba spun on his heel and opened fire with his now freed blaster. Each blast of the red laser light illuminating the horrific sight of what had attacked him. It was a mass of flesh, distorted and disfigured, like a bloated, coagulated wound given form. It might once have been a person, but now extra legs had sprouted beneath it, arms having melted into slimy blood-red tentacles that were flailing in pain as the creature tried to douse the fire. Boba backed out of the shack's front entrance, still firing his carbine blaster. Its bolts were having little effect on the fleshy, inhuman monster, seeming to only cause it irritation rather than leaving lasting damage. But as the infamous hunter moved his foot behind him, a wooden porch step snapped beneath, causing him to topple over, landing on his back in the snow. His blaster had fallen from his hands as he came crashing down, forcing him to roll over and reach for it. That's when he saw the others. Emerging from the abandoned rural town, a group of nightmarish abominations were slithering out of nearby shacks. They shambled towards Boba, each one of them looking different from the next, but no less stomach-churning in their fleshy, blood-soaked appearances. Some were bipedal, walking on the remnants of two legs, but with their entire upper body fused into a single monstrous mass. Others looked like they had once been small animals, but had been cruelly and unnaturally twisted into amorphous, slimy mutations of their former selves. The horde of beings, a veritable smorgasbord of flesh that hates, were crawling towards Boba. He had spent the earliest parts of his childhood surrounded by cloners on Kamino, alien experts in genetics. Since then, he'd been all over the galaxy and met people of all different species. It wasn't hard for Boba to see what these things, these monsters, were. They were the townsfolk that once lived in this snow-covered place. Or at least, they used to be people. Now, they were horrific. From behind him, the first creature, the one that had drawn him out, re-emerged, still enraged. But as he turned to look at it, making sure he was aware of all threats surrounding him, Boba spotted its skin. The part where he had singed with his flamethrower were still severely burned, practically reduced to a cinder. Fire. That could hurt them. Reaching into the ground to retrieve and stow his blaster, Boba felt something tugging at the weapon, pulling it in the opposite direction. Another of the fleshy monsters, a crawling, spider-like collection of arms and legs with no body or head, had flung an appendage outwards and grabbed the carbine. Trying to pull it back, Boba slipped in the snow and was being dragged towards the writhing monstrosity. A loud bang echoed around the nearby town, punctuated by a bright red light soaring through the sky and gently floating back down towards the ground. The white-hot flare filled the area with a glow, the creatures all momentarily turning their attention to it, sensing its heat. That split second was his one chance. All of Boba's instincts, every lesson Django had taught him, told him to strike first if he wanted to make a way alive. He dropped the blaster, leaving it in the creature's grip. He had spares back on the fire spray, but they'd be no good to him if he was dead. Hitting one of the tiny switches on his vambrace, two scorching hot flames spat from the exhaust of Boba's jetpack. Immediately, he was lifted up off the ground, hovering just above the roofs of the small wooden structures around him. In that same microsecond, the abominations of flesh turned their collective attention back to their airborne prey. The ones that still had heads or had grown extra, disfigured and misshapen growths in the place of a head looked up at Boba. To them, he was merely another vessel for them to infect with the same disease that plagued them, but little did any of them know he was the Boba Fett, the galaxy's deadliest, most famous Beskar-clad bounty hunter, and a good bounty hunter was never unarmed. Igniting in an instant, the flickering nozzle end of Boba's wrist-mounted flamethrower began spraying superheated fuel over the horde of monstrosities below. Long tongues of orange flame engulfed the writhing, slithering creatures, burning them to a crisp as Boba Fett rained unrelenting hell down on the flesh that hates. Hovering above them, he had given himself enough high ground to gain an advantage. Ironically, the distance Boba had put between himself and the monsters wasn't dissimilar to the detachment he had for those he had killed or captured for Jabba the Hutt in the past. They had all been people too, just like these twisted masses of flesh had once been human. 
Putting those thoughts down like he'd been taught to, Boba's attention was focused on blasting any of the fleeing creatures, burning them with enough intensity to leave little behind but charred remains. Except he had forgotten, in his haste, to check behind him. The monster that had first attacked him was making quick work of scaling the nearest single-story shack and flailed one of its appendages at Boba. It caught him in mid-air, plucking him out of the sky and wrenching him back down to the snowy ground once more. Winded, Boba was grasping to catch his breath underneath his helmet. He certainly didn't need to look to know his jetpack had most likely been damaged by his fall. But that was currently the least of his worries. Towering above, looming over him, the repulsive monster looked like it was rearing up to pounce. Boba reached to relight his flamethrower, only for his gauntlet to spark. It had taken a hit on the way down, too. Desperation set in. He lifted his knee and fired two darts from the microcannons mounted on his yellow knee pads. The spike darts became embedded in the fleshy creature's mass, barely phasing it. Loading a wrist rocket, Boba raised his other vambrace to fire, only for the arm he wore on it to be grabbed by one of the other creatures, still burning, half alive. Meanwhile, the one on the roof looked ready to leap. It sprung into the air, ready to come crashing down to kill the feared former bounty hunter. A bright light burst from somewhere nearby. It wasn't another flare. This one was a blinding eruption of pure white. Even through the tinted T-shaped visor of his helmet, it stung Boba's eyes so much that he had to cover his face with his hand. As he peered back, he almost mistook the light gray of the sky for the same light. Looking around, the monster had vanished. Those that were left still writhing, their amorphous bodies coated with fire, which rapidly spread to the wood of the nearby houses. Keeping his guard up as he always did, Boba climbed to his feet, lifting the gauntlet with a miniature blaster mounted on it to defend himself. He'd seen and even used disintegration weapons in the past, but the bounty hunter had never known anything to make a creature like that monster completely vanish in a single flash. He turned at a sound, not one of the creatures or the gentle crackling of flames, but the gentle crunch of snow under someone's foot. Three strangers walked slowly up to Boba, not one among them flinching when he lifted his vambrace standing his ground. Their clothing was patchwork, cobbled together from scraps, but looked similar to the same cloaks worn by the Jedi of old. As the group approached him, the bounty hunter noticed their bodies had also been altered, although not in the same way as the vile fleshy creatures that now littered the snow around him. Metalwork, mechanized components, and devices of all manner protruded from their uncovered arms and necks. Pieces of machinery, embedded in their skulls in place of their eyes. Boba was no stranger to cyborgs, those who had modified their own bodies with technological augmentations and modifications. One of the three was missing an entire hand in its place with what looked like some kind of cannon, still warm from having just fired. The cloaked mechanized trio looked at Fett with curiosity, as if they were examining, no, admiring, his armor. Just like his damaged ship, Boba's armor belonged to his father, and if these three wanted to take it, they'd have to kill him for it. I take it that was your flare that distracted them? He growled beneath his helmet. The frontmost of the group nodded, bowing his head gently, indicating he meant no harm. Indeed. We saw something. A vessel, we believe, fall from the sky not far from here. The part man, part machine replied. Was that your craft, warrior? Lowering his arm at last, Boba nodded in response. Don't suppose you know where I can get my ship fixed? The hunter asked. We may be able to assist you. One of the two interjected. You have machinery. We watched you use it to fight. Are you one of us? I give my allegiance to no one. Boba stated as he eyed the speaker. He barely looked older than a teenager. Who are you people? Some have called us Mechanites. Others know us as the Church of the Broken God. The leader spoke up in reply. Little of that matters now. Not since the flesh overran this place. They spread via skin contact. Only the parts of our bodies we have yet to mechanize are still vulnerable to their infection. I certainly hope none of them touched you, warrior. Boba took a look over his shoulder at the bodies of the still-burning creatures, glad that his helmet was pressurized and his flight suit was on tight. The flesh. He muttered to himself. I'm fine. He declared with certainty. In that case, the lead mechanite said, Let's see about fixing your ship, shall we? Now go and check out SCP-096 versus SCP-343 and SCP-049 versus SCP-173 if you want to hear more about the outcomes of more chaotic clashes between anomalies battling each other for supremacy.